back with more Avatar The Last Airbender. This is episode 12 of season one. Very excited to see what's gonna be happening next. Um, you may have noticed there wasn't um, a reaction out last week in case you missed my community post. Um, I got a wisdom tooth out, so I needed to recover from that, which is why there wasn't a reaction last weekend. But normal service has resumed, so I'm excited. Um, obviously the last episode was kind of um, an interesting one in terms of the fandom, it would seem, in terms of how it's received and stuff. But a lot of people seem quite keen on this one. They were like, oh, buckle up for the next one. So I'm excited to see exactly what that may mean. I mean, it's called The Storm, so probably nothing pleasant. Either way, very excited. So let's get into the next one. We need you, Aang. I need you too. Well, it's a dream, I would assume. And there's... The storm I've heard so much about. Thanos, no! I suggest we alter our course and head southwest. We know the Avatar's traveling northward, so we will do the same. Prince Duco, consider the safety of the crew. The safety of the crew doesn't matter. That's nice. He's just all worked up. Hmm. It's not gonna get him respect, is it? There's going to be a storm! A bad one. Well, it's your joints against my brain. Then I hope your brain can find someone else to hold that fish, because I ain't coming. Then I'll find a new fish, Holler, and pay him double what you get. How you like that? I'll go. Uh, You're hired. Oh, boy. You'd better learn some respect, or I'll teach it to you. I mean, you need what to learn respect, you too. Know about respect? What should I expect from a spoiled prince? Uh-oh. Easy now. Oh dear. I don't need your help keeping order on my ship. I mean, I think you do. You're the Avatar, ain't you? That's right. Well, don't be so smiley about it. The Avatar disappeared for a hundred years. You turned your back on the world. Don't yell at him. And I guess I must have imagined the last hundred years of war and suffering. Aang is the bravest person I know. He was an icicle. An angsicle. Save lives since I met him. It's not his fault he disappeared, right, Aang? Aang, what's wrong? Uh-oh. Do we have some painful memories to explore? I'll never forget the day the monks told me I was the Avatar. Ooh. I was playing with some other kids. I've been hoping to see so. this moment. The toys you picked were the four Avatar relics. These items belong to oh. Avatar's past. We would have told you of your identity when you turned 16. But there are troubling signs. We need you, Aang. God, timing's kind of unfortunate that that's happening when he's that young then. My nephew is a complicated young man. He has been through much. Oh damn, we're getting all the flashbacks I wanted to see. He doesn't have his burn yet. But the 41st is entirely new recruits. How do you expect them to defeat a powerful Earth Kingdom battalion? I do it. Uh, and use as a distraction while we mount an attack from the rear. What better to use as... You can't sacrifice an entire division oh, like uh -oh. that. Those soldiers love and defend our nation. How can you betray them? Oh damn. He doesn't have that regard for life anymore. It's kind of an unfair advantage for whichever team you're on. But I'm still the same. Nothing's changed. So, what? Well, you can't play? That's the only fair way. Oh, okay. We'll make a Sorry. game where that's not a factor. I must test you on some high-level techniques. Oh, boy. No. As long as I am his guardian, I will decide when he trains. And when he gets his butt kicked at Pai Shou. <laughs> okay. All right. The Fire Lord became very angry with him. Lives up to the name, then. The challenge of the general was an act of complete disrespect. When he turned to face his opponent, he was surprised to see it was not the general. Zuko had spoken out against the general's plan. But by doing so in the Fire Lord's room, so it's dad. it was the Fire Lord whom he had disrespected. Oh dear. Now that is daddy it's issues. Concerned. You and Aang must be separated. The Avatar will be sent away to the Eastern Air Temple to complete his training. Wow. 
Is that why he leads? Ah, uh, don't do that again. I was afraid and confused. <gasps> oh no. Caught in the storm and then he froze them. They just been sensible about it. If you don't know what would have he wouldn't have had to run away. Dicks. The world needs you now. Give people hope. Can't lose faith in an avatar that isn't when there. Zuko's suffering will be your teacher. I looked away. Jeez. I always thought that Prince Zuko was in a training accident. It was no accident. After the duel. The Avatar gives Zuko hope. Hmm. Just like everyone, just in a twisted way. This storm is becoming a typhoon! They're caught out at sea! I'm going to find them. He's gonna face the storm again. I'm staying here! Mood. We'll be back soon, I promise. This time he won't be alone. Damn, son! I love it how it's almost like black and white, like the storm. Let him go. We need to get this ship to safety. Yeah. Then we must head directly into the eye of the Can't catch the avatar if you drown. <laughs> uh oh. Ah. This time you can do it differently. Yeah. I'm sorry. Your apology is accepted. <laughs> Next time when he says there's gonna be a storm. Oh, I love how they've paralleled those two. I'm here now and I'm going to make the most of it. I don't think you're gonna have those nightmares anymore. If you weren't here now, well, I guess I wouldn't be either. Thank you for saving my life, Avatar. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, what a fantastic episode. I bloody love that. Definitely one of my favourites so far. Gave me so, so many answers, so many things I wanted to see. Um, so I thought, oh, maybe we'll get, like, an episode all about Aang's past and him, like, learning he was going to be the Avatar. I thought we'd get a whole episode about Zuko, how he got the burn and everything. Um, they're like, you know what? We're going to treat you and put them both in one episode. Um, and the way they did it was just so well done. Um, we've seen so many times, I think, them paralleling Aang and Zuko. So it makes perfect sense to reveal kind of origin stories-esque for them at the same time. Um see the journeys they've both gone on um, embracing the past um, letting it go at times as well um, you know Aang is kind of learning to let that go now you know I can't speculate on what could have happened in the past I'm here now let's make things right Zuko um, his driving force is his past and what happened to him with his dad because he wants to get back there and get his honor back uh, so the way they're similar and not in terms of their journeys. You know, I think um, they have the potential to be very similar people, I guess, but just because of where they were born or what powers they have, um, who surrounded them, what kind of authority figures they had, um, kind of shapes and changes them. Like, it's kind of the nature nurture thing, I guess, because Aang had his mentor figure who only wanted what was best for him. You know, he didn't just see him as the avatar, he saw him as Aang, which I think is the important thing that everyone else missed, and I think that kind of led Aang to feel so isolated. Um, suddenly him being the Avatar and everybody knowing that's who he was um, completely changed his identity in a way that he didn't want. Everyone changed it for him. Um, and therefore, of course, he's going to be scared of it because 
he hadn't truly accepted that yet. He, I think he needs to properly merge it together, find some games that he can join in with. And, you know, a lot of those guys, like they said, oh, we, we've known you're the avatar for quite some time now. But as soon as they told him that, they then started treating him differently in terms of his training and stuff. Um, so if they just kind of kept it going, obviously he does need to study more stuff and he needs to master more stuff than the average airbender would. But, um, yeah, they really, apart from, like, his mental guy, a lot of them kind of went about it completely the wrong way. And then they were trying to... They were forcing it on him when he wasn't ready, and he was just this little kid. And like they even said, you know, we wouldn't normally tell you until you're 16. So he's meant to be a lot more mature, um, already have a few years' worth of more knowledge yet before he's even supposed to find out. Um, but because they fear that war was coming and everything, they had to tell him early. So they then treated him like a 16-year-old who just realised that he's the Avatar instead of, you know, 10, 11-year-old, whoever he was then. Um, you still should have had years of very important development, um, you know, at that age, um, particularly even, you know, outside of just being the Avatar or being an airbender, what have you, just growing up at that age is a bloody rough time. Um, so to have that on top of him, maybe they were forced to tell him that, but they didn't take into consideration the process needed to be different, I guess, at that point. So I don't really blame Aang for kind of feeling like he needed to get himself out of that situation. And then we saw, you know, the events that led him to freeze himself in Appa for a hundred years, um, kind of dealing with the guilt of that and thinking of all the things, you know, he wasn't around for, but now he is around for even more things. You know, the world didn't end, the world didn't explode and, um, you know, descend into absolute chaos and Fire Nation took over absolutely everything in the hundred years he was gone. Obviously stuff has gone wrong for people. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's important that Aang is here now and you can't really change the past. And I love that journey for him and how Zuko is still so defined by that and who he is. But there are elements of the person he used to be, I think, creeping through. I love that um, they were saying, you know, the Avatar gives people hope. Like Katara was saying to Aang, um, his return has brought hope to a lot of people and to Zuko as well, even though he's the one hunting him down. So that gives him hope that he can return home, return to his father, get his honour back, um, be that person he kind of probably will never be again, but Zuko wants to be again, uh, that boy who kind of stood up for what was right and, you know, defending people's honour, like these newish Fire Nation recruits. He was trying to make sure that they weren't disrespected and in turn he was taught that disrespect and that coldness, ironically, because he got burned. Um that we then saw people um, kind of turn on him for and hate him a bit for um, in this episode because he didn't really have that same regard for human life in the present day as he did in those flashbacks because of what happened to him. So I thought that was a very interesting parallel um, and how in a different way to a lot of other people, Aang as the Avatar can still give him that hope that he desperately craves. Um, but I loved, loved, loved that we've got flashbacks for Aang, flashbacks for Zuko. It's something I've been really keen to see for a long time. I assumed it, it would be something like, I didn't think it would be like an accident that he got his um, scar from because th I think they'd strongly implied that before, that it was a very meaningful thing that happened to him to get that scar and everything, that burn. Um, so it's not the biggest surprise that it came from his father himself, but he had to fight all that. The fact that he's so keen for a fight nowadays, he'll fight anyone nowadays, but when it came to his father, he was like, no way, I'm not doing that. Um, really interesting and... Iroh not being able to even watch that moment happen. Um, he's been the one to stand up for Zuko, even when Zuko's being horrible to him in the present day, Iroh still kind of defends him at every turn. Um, that's the kind of familial love I think Zuko needed from his father and things probably would have been quite different. Um, so yeah, like the, the father figures they kind of explored in this one. Um, you know, Aang's mentor, I keep forgetting his name, versus Zuko's father. Um, and then the true father figure, I feel like he really has now in his uncle Iroh. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed getting all that backstory and how those two characters are linked so strongly. Um, and there are hints now that, um, while Aang is kind of letting go of that past and the what ifs of his past to move forward, um, maybe Zuko's way of moving forward is to remember who he used to be and remember that past 
because that's his driving force to find the avatar and get home but also glimpses of who he used to be kind of came through when the storm hit he was like no let's not go after the avatar this time let him go we need to get the ship stabilized and everything and then he saved that guy at the end as well he was about to fall to his death um so there were glimpses of the, the guy he used to be still in there i think he likes to think he's been changed and shaped by everything maybe a lot more than he actually has and he just needs to open that side out again because probably wasn't you know the best thing for him to go through especially an injury like that at the hand of his own father that's gonna take a lot to get over um if he could ever get over it we'll I mean, have to wait and see he's quite literally scarred from the incident um and you know the one key time it seems like he stood up for people and stood up for their rights and their respect um that happened to him so he's not overly keen on showing that again but a bit of it leaked out in this one which i like so i feel like there's some hope for zuko um, maybe some sort of redemption or some really interesting character stuff for him regardless and i do think having ira around is a huge benefit for him um because god knows just how dark a path he's gone down if he was just leading all this on his own i mean i feel like the rest of the crew would have just turned on him and like chucked him out or killed him or something by this point um so ira is a really good way of keeping things grounded keep things level-headed um just like ang you know this time he has katara and soccer around him and he's doing all of this stuff um so when he got caught in the storm before with just him and Appa, um, he didn't really have anyone there to guide him properly because um, he had to flee because of everything that happened. And then he ended up freezing himself in Appa for a hundred years. This time, you know, he had Katara off with him when he went to save Sokka and the fishermen. Um, so it's just the difference and the influence the people around you can have. Like imagine, I feel like Aang could have been an incredible avatar if they just let his mentor, properly, his guardian, like properly do his thing and train him the way he needed to be trained. And, that guy remembered that Aang was still just a child, not the 16-year-old Avatar who suddenly got this huge destiny shoved on him. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a shame that it didn't go that way. But also, like Katara was saying, um, maybe it was meant to be, maybe this is fate, maybe it's a good thing that it will play out the way it has because now Aang is around to still do some good. It's not like he's frozen for eternity and he never does any good. He's here now, he can bring balance again hopefully, if he masters everything. Um, so I loved everything with Aang's story in this one, um, the Zuko story, the way they were tying it back um, to their flashbacks, tying those characters together, um, and how the past can define and shape um, what they're doing now and potentially their futures in different ways, the influences of the people around them, how that's kind of changed them. Um, some really, really fascinating character stuff there. I feel like I could just write a whole bloody essay just on those aspects and those flashbacks. And I'm almost tempted, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> God, love a good essay. Anyway, uh, I thought that was really cool. And the fact that Aang is the one who told this story to Katara and opened up about it. Um, Zuko wasn't the one revealing his own backstory and revealing what happened to him. Iroh was kind of doing it on his behalf. Because I don't feel like Zuko would have been open and honest about that because it still affected him so badly and so deeply. But he seems a lot better at kind of ignoring it, I guess, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Repressing it, repressing it, um, as opposed to Aang, who probably was trying and has been trying, but then obviously those nightmares were coming back, getting worse and worse, it would seem. Um, so I liked that, and he ended up, nice kind of cyclical thing, he ended up facing the storm, coming out the other side of it this time, as he's letting go of the past there. Uh, so fantastic stuff with that. I liked Katara being there as like a pillar of support for Aang, defending him, much like Iroh was defending Zuko and kind of um, reminding people, giving context to people. Uh, that was really nice as well. Uh, like following him to the cave and hearing him out, you know, completely understanding um, the pressures he was under, being like, what, well, you know, you had every right to be angry, you had every right to run away. Um, you can't change what happens now. Um, obviously that meant Sokka's kind of on the sideline because he just had to be with the fishermen and get caught up with everything. Um, but, you know, it probably would have been a bit too much to have Sokka and Katara there for Aang's story, you know. We don't want to have too many voices interjecting at that moment. And I feel like um, Katara is like the perfect person to hear that story from Aang. So it made a lot of sense. Um, and yeah, just what a what an episode. <laughs> what an amazing story. Um, the fact that they can do such deep kind of character studies through flashbacks 
Um, and also, it's not just like it was a flashback episode. They tied it to stuff that was happening in present day with those two characters as well in like a 22 minute episode is kind of insane. You know, you could watch a two hour movie that doesn't go as deep as this 22 minute episode did in terms of characters. And that's balmy. So that's a testament to how well written this was. Um, I think it looks even better coming off the last episode, which wasn't quite so, you know, arc plot heavy. Um, the fact that we've got so much in this one more than made up for that. Um, damn. Damn. I can see why people were looking forward to um, me getting to this one. Uh, and yeah, this was an awesome episode. I'm glad to finally have gotten some of those answers. I wasn't expecting them quite yet, actually. This is this was a lot sooner than I was expecting to get proper answers um, and flashbacks, particularly with the Zuko stuff. And I was expecting that a lot later on. But I imagine at some point we'll properly meet um, the Fire Lord. I like that they kind of make him more of just like a figure as opposed to an actual personal character right now. I mean, like, we've never actually seen his face, I don't think. We've heard his voice now. Um, that was interesting, and I loved the colouring of this episode as well, um, during the storm sections. Like, the storm's basically black and white, because it's just so gloomy. And then the characters, you can see a bit of colour through them. The lightning was obviously um, very bright and everything. Um, so, yeah, some really impressive colouring in this episode as well. Damn, that was awesome. I loved it. I feel like I keep talking on and on about why I love this episode and how the characters were linked and all that. But again, I'll save that for my essay. Uh, yeah, this is easily one of my favourites so far. I absolutely adored this episode. Fantastic stuff. Ah, I can't wait to see where things are going to be taken next. But yeah, that was that. Um, I apologise that you had to wait an extra week for me to get to this one. I'm kind of sad now that it worked out that way. Um, but I suppose better than waiting two weeks for the last episode that people weren't as keen on, I suppose. Um, but either way, we got there in the end. What an episode. Amazing. Easily one of my favourites, if not my favourite so far. And yeah, I look forward to seeing where they take things next. But until my next reaction, thanks for watching.